Since SpaceX's inaugural test flight of the most powerful rocket ever constructed, the company's engineers, federal regulators, and environmentalists have been trying to assess the aftermath of the spacecraft explosion and what happens next. Notably, on April 29th, the SpaceX CEO Elon Musk officially reviewed Starship's first launch during a Twitter Spaces chat. Let's discuss everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The April 20th Starship flight attempt to orbit was incredible to watch. The stainless steel rocket ship went 39 kilometers above Starbase launch's site and exploded midair. But later, SpaceX revealed the flight ended with a rapid, unscheduled disassembly, or a RUD, four minutes into the flight. That due to the multiple of 33 Raptor V2s that shut down, and then SpaceX caused the vehicle to self-destruct by commanding the rocket's flight termination system, or FTS, as soon as it noticed it was steering off course. Basically, the, the, the outcome was roughly in the sort of what I expected, maybe slightly exceeding my expectations, but uh, roughly what I expected, which was, or hoped for, I should say, which is that we would get clear of the pad. But overall, I actually feel like that, that was a great flight. Musk offering a recap of the flight, noting that problems began immediately at liftoff when three of the 33 Raptor engines on the vehicle's Super Heavy booster either failed to start or aborted during startup. They, they, those engines did not explode, but they were just, the system didn't think they were healthy enough to bring them to full thrust. It was unclear what caused the engine failures, but Musk said it did not appear to be damaged from the rock tornado of debris from the concrete pad created by the engine thrust at liftoff. We weirdly do not see evidence of, of the rock tornado actually uh, damaging engines or heat shields in a material way. But it, it may have, but we have not yet seen uh, evidence of that. He added that the 30 working engines were the minimum needed for liftoff, causing a distinct lean to the vehicle as it cleared the pad. At T plus 27 seconds, a Raptor designated engine 19 lost communication while some kind of energetic event broke off part of the heat shield around the engine and three others. At that point, there were visible fires coming from the aft end of the rocket, he said. At T plus 62 seconds, there was additional heat shield damage around another Raptor, engine 30, although that engine continued to operate. At T plus 85 seconds, things hit the fan, he said, with the loss of communication with another engine. Roughly from this point onwards, we, we lose uh, thrust vector control of the rockets. Meaning it could no longer steer. At that point, the rocket started to lose its thrust vector control or the ability to steer itself. The addition of the flight termination system was a result of that. The longest lead item on that is probably requalification of the flight termination system, because we did initiate the flight termination system, but it was not enough to, it, it took way too long to rupture the tanks. SpaceX made no attempt to separate the Starship upper stage from the super heavy vehicle as it tumbled in the latter stages of flight. Musk said that while controllers initiated the flight termination system, it took much longer than expected, about 40 seconds for explosives to rupture the vehicle tanks. But there was some good news. The vehicle structural margins appear to be better than we expected. As we can tell, the fact that the vehicle is actually doing somersaults towards the end and uh, still staying intact. Actually, the time lag did not pose a safety issue, but the system, which is supposed to terminate flight nearly instantaneously, will need to be requalified before another Starship Super Heavy is launched. Requalifying that the flight termination system will be the long lead item for the next launch, he predicted, with the next vehicle and a repaired pad likely ready in six to eight weeks. Yes, the April 20th launch also damaged the rocket's launch pad at Boca Chica Beach, Texas, but Musk said it should be repaired quickly. The super heavy booster, which can generate over 16 million pounds of force, that's twice the power of a Saturn V or Space Launch System rocket, sat on the concrete launch pad for about five seconds before lifting off. The result was a rock tornado that spewed debris far from the intended fallout zone and left a 25-foot hole in the ground. On May 1st, a group of environmental organizations sued the FAA, which oversees commercial U.S. space flight, over its decision to give SpaceX permission to launch the Starship Super Heavy flight test from Boca Chica Beach without a more in-depth study of the rocket's potential environmental impacts, and that was reported through Reuters. SpaceX's South Texas spaceport is adjacent to a national wildlife refuge. 
Musk played down the damage to the pad itself, including concrete debris scattered over nearly 400 acres around the pad and a plume that deposited a sand-like material more than 10 kilometers away. Uh, it's like a human-made set sandstorm, but we don't, we don't want to do that again. Musk said SpaceX's next super heavy booster, which includes many upgrades, will lift off the pad faster. Changes to the pad include placing a water-jacketed steel sandwich below the launch mount. You, you have what is basically a massive, super strong steel showerhead pointing up. With that water deluge system mitigating dust and debris. SpaceX had been working on the device before the launch, but it wasn't ready in time. If we'd expected to dig a hole, we would not have flown. Data from the static fire test in February when 31 of 33 Raptor engines fired at 50% of rated thrust caused fairly modest erosion of the Fondag, that's the heavy-duty concrete on the pad. We thought it would be fine for one launch. He said SpaceX would also replace damaged tank farm tanks at the pad that were already set to be swapped out with vacuum jacketed versions. The launch tower itself suffered no meaningful damage, he added. Musk expects to spend about $2 billion this year on Starship, which he argued the company can support without raising any outside funding. The next launch will use a super heavy booster called Booster 9, but he said the company had not decided which of the Starship upper stages will be the one to fly. The engines on Booster 9, which is next, are much newer and more consistent and, and re really with a significant reliability improvements over Booster 7. So I think we'll see a much more robust engine situation with Booster 9. Booster 9 is a lot easier because we use uh, electric motors to, to steer the engines as opposed to uh, hydraulic actuators where you've got a common manifold between the hydraulic actuators. The, the electric actuated engines will be much more isolated. It'll be key to ensure that any single engine failures are isolated and the company's made the rocket more robust for this purpose. If, if you have extremely good engine isolation um, so that if an engine fails, it does not cause a failure of neighboring engine or the stage itself. Because then, you know, if you lose one of 33 engines, that's a 3% thrust loss, it's not a big deal. Uh, but if you do not have good en engine isolation and, and an engine failure can domino to other engines or to parts of the stage, then you have an extremely unreliable design. Musk was optimistic that the second launch will get at least through stage separation. Yes, that, that's our goal for the next flight is make it to staging and hope, hopefully succeed in staging and get, get to orbit. Get, so I think, I think we've got a decent shot of getting to orbit with the next flight. He believes that with the data they gathered from the 420 launch, there's now an 80% probability of reaching orbit with Starship this year. I think close to 100% chance of reaching orbit within 12 months. However, Musk reiterated that the, the, the goal of these early missions is just information. Like, we don't have any payload or anything. It's, uh, let's try to learn as much as possible. Must said of the next launch. Once again, excitement guaranteed, success is not. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.